How's that? Can you hear me now? I think I think that's working now. Um, yeah, uh, all the mics, uh, uh, all the Elgato stuff just got a load of updates. So you just wiped all the settings clear of everything. It was a right pain in it. But anywho, as I was saying, welcome to Let's Create, uh, where we take a game that we uh, know and love. And in this case, we're doing Crash Bandicoot. And we're going to try to recreate its mechanics live on air um, without any sort of prep or any pre-made stuff. We're just going to go straight from the get-go. Uh, and what I like to do about with these shows is sort of show you how I'd break down a mechanic, talk about what I'm noticing about mechanics and how we could try and recreate them inside Unreal Engine. Um, and as usual with these Let's Creates, the project files will be available to gold patrons over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. So if you want to download a patron file, a project files over on Patreon, you can do so after the stream. So, um, now Unreal just went through an update, so hopefully it won't take us long to come up. Hang on, let's, do, let's just try. Uh, as always, when you soon as you want to go live, things break and want to update and all sorts of things. I'm hoping it just lets us go through. Now, Crash Bandicoot was one of my favourite games uh, playing when I was a kid, um, and I very much enjoyed looking at, enjoyed playing the uh, the remake trilogy and also Crash Bandicoot Four. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Um, we are using Unreal Engine Five Point Two Point One. Um, hence why it just updated. Uh, I don't know what's actually new in point one. I I'm guess it's just fixes. Usually it's just fixes. Um, so we're just waiting for that to load up now. Um, but how is everyone doing? Hopefully everyone's doing okay and having a good day. Um, and doing quite well. So we're taking a look at Crash Bandicoot. And uh, what I like to do before we start the stream is, especially if, you, if it's a game I haven't played for a while, in this case Crash Bandicoot is, uh, I like to look at it, uh, its gameplay and see, note, take note of things that I may not notice while playing the game myself. Um, and see how we could recreate, recreate some of this stuff. Now, fun fact, the, un, uh, the Crash Bandicoot remake trilogy and uh, Crash Bandicoot 4 were made using Unreal Engine 4. So... <laughs> it's definitely possible um so uh we're gonna try and do some work uh on that in here today um i'm just gonna try and bring in some assets to use give me one second we'll see if i can get it working um so one thing whoop i've been over here one thing i i noticed while looking at this footage is a, a couple of things i want to focus on in getting these mechanics working right and that's the camera movement and the platforming and the crates um enemies and obstacles will try and get on that as well but we're definitely going to try and do the camera stuff um i think that'd be really interesting to try and do the camera stuff because there are things in here that you may not really realize straight off the bat about the camera uh, one thing for example is you notice how the camera doesn't move up and down it just follows along so if you jump in the air it doesn't go with the character so the camera's not attached to crash okay because if that was the case it would go up in the air with him um that's not the case um, let me try and put this in in here. So that's the one, the major thing I'm noticing here. But I'm also noting that they probably have a, uh, used a few camera modifiers here and there because the camera does change the distance from the character based upon what part of the level they're in. So we'll be going through camera modifiers and how they work as well today. Um, but yeah. Okay, it looks like that's all come through. Ye yes. Okay. So we're going to bring in Unreal Engine now. And uh, we'll take a look at what we can do here. So First of all, we need some sort of mock level to test this on. Obviously, this is not a Crash Bandicoot looking level. We need to make something pretty simple to uh, test out our theories and things. So I'm just going to clear a lot of this stuff out. Um, we're going to get rid of all that stuff. And that stuff. 
Right, so, um, can you also show how the Wampa Fruit's going to UI and update the count? Uh, yo, if we have time, yeah, sure, sure. Um, uh, where can you find the live streams? That question from 93 to 99. I'll check that out. We probably didn't release them because I probably forgot to do or didn't have time to because that was during the time my son was in hospital to, um, and doing with all that stuff to actually update the time codes on it like I normally try and do. But, um, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to release them soon. Um, okay, so I say we can do something fairly straightforward with the level design. In fact, actually, what we'll do is we'll get rid of the floor, make the floor a landscape. Because that allows us to do some more interesting things with it. Like that. Okay. And let's put our player start way back here. And this will do for our little testing level, probably. Let's just go in and make sure the spacing feels okay. Yeah, probably a bit tighter. Bring that in a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so we're going to try and do the camera stuff first of all. Um, but to help us with this, I've brought in the assets from Unreal's courses that they produced. So the character here is a little... Um, little guy here uh no i want to assign a skeleton it is this one this is one already except oh, it's there this is what you get for skeleton assign skeleton accept right there we go um yeah, so we, uh, we've got this little guy in from the uh, Unreal courses. He's a pretty nice little rig, has some nice animations. I thought it'd be quite cute to put him in here. Um, but obviously, you can use whatever the hell mesh you want to use. So I'm guessing the animations are also detached from all of this. So I'm going to have to assign a skeleton to this one. Uh, let's do it the old fashioned way. Yeah. Yeah. It's because I just copied it in rather than. Okay, uh, I can't assign the skeleton. Why can't I assign the skeleton? Unless it's already done it. Oh, yes, it can be errors. Yes, that one. Oh, I'd have to redo it for all of them. Oh, it's gonna be long. Um, no, hold on. Why is that not animating? If not, we just have to use a mannequin. Eh? Replace skeleton. Uh, uh, save all. If not, I'll just use a mannequin. Just be nice to use these guys. Yeah, why is he not doing his thing? That's because I didn't migrate it over. I just copied the files over. I've closed it now, so that's great. Find skeleton. Replace skeleton. Yeah. Not liking it, is it? All right, screw it. We'll have to do it without that one. Shame, because it's got a nice animations. No, anyway, we'll just use the mannequin. Okay, so um, the mannequin. Right, so first of all, we're not using the camera that's on the mannequin. So we're going to go to third person character and take off that camera there. This on the spring arm here. Ooh. Delete that. Well, so uh, that also means we want to get rid of any of the camera inputs. We're not dealing with that sort of nice stuff. Get rid of that. Uh, movement we'll keep in there and jumping we'll keep in there for now okay so when I spawn in there's not going to be any oh yeah I haven't done it because oh, bloody thing. Right, let me just delete these ones made a mistake there no? 
Delete. Yes. It's fine. We'll just do all placeholder stuff. Uh, will there be a stream recording of the channel? Yes, there will be, but not straight away. Uh, Patreon members get access to it straight away. Um, everyone else get it like a couple of weeks later. Do 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 do. So yeah, the camera does seem to follow a linear path. You're right, Daniel, but it does still move with the path. So we can use a spline on the camera, make the camera follow the spline. Um, so bear with me on this one. Right, so have you let you just play it now? Yep, there you go. Right, so we need to put a camera in there. So let's go ahead and create the blueprint class for the camera. And we do actor. Uh, we'll actually call it level camera. And this will have a uh, spring arm. And on that spring arm, we'll have a camera. And I'm going to angle it up a little bit, like normal. Like we normally do. Like that. That sort of point of view for the Crash Bandicoot game, roughly. We may pull the target arm length back a bit as well to 400, so to speak. But the thing that's extra with this is that we have a spline. So we're going to add a spline to this like that so the way this camera is going to work is that we are going to drag this out again by the way we're making this all live i've not prepped this at all so we will see if this works if it doesn't work we'll debug figure it out and see what else we can do um i want to turn off the collision on the spring arm so when you turn off the collision test it means the spring arm is not going to do that springy action when it hits the floor for example like that so here we've got this um uh spline here and we can drag this out as we see fit and curve it if we need to um whatever you like but we should do a dead straight one for first of all um just for now and i want to make the camera initially started as the main camera so on begin play here we're going to get the player controller and from that we are going to um set view target with blend and the view target will be itself and this basically just sets the camera to be used by the player controller so there we go okay now obviously it's not following the characters they travel along the line so this is how we're going to do this i want to tell the level camera to move along the spline based upon how close the character is on that spline point so if i go to um maybe a tick you want it very 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 regularly so tick would do just fine and we can always turn down the, the frequency of the tick if we want to improve its optimization but it shouldn't matter too much so on the event tick here we'll just work with this and i'm going to change the um i'm going to get sorry not change get player character and get the actor's location and i'm going to drag out my spline now with splines, there's a little function in there. We can get the closest uh, location on a spline uh, point, uh, spline uh, location. So uh, find location closest to world location. Click on this, and we'll drag that into there. So it's going to feed it the player character's location, and it's going to spit out here a coordinate space. And the coordinate space I want it to follow is going to be uh, local or world depends on what i'm going to do i'm going to do it as uh well it doesn't really matter i'll do it as world and with world here i can take the spring arm and not the camera the spring arm and set its location so set world location like that so what will happen is this So the camera will now follow that spline. I can jump, it doesn't really matter. Um, it'll just go along that spline there. So you get a really nice linear camera. And what's really good about this, it will follow the spline. So if there was a bit in here where there was a slope or a curve or something. So let's do that. Let's just add a little curvature to this thing. like that and move and add more of a spline around here 
Um, like that. This is not exactly a center. I'm going to fix the centering of this a little bit. Okay, so again, it would follow that curvature of the line, but you'll notice one little thing. It won't update its rotation. So as I go around this corner, nothing happens, okay, with the rotation of it. So I need it to, to rotate based upon the direction of the line too. So on my camera here, we're going to get the spring on and we're going to set its uh, rotation. And we'll do world rotation. And what I want to do is something similar here. I can take the um, location here and I can do find um, direction closest to world location. Again, I'm going to put in the world coordinate space. I'll just plug that in there rather than having two of them. Just have one like that. So now we've got this direction. This is going to be a vector. So it's a vector coordinate. So you want to convert a vector coordinate to a rotator. You just drag it in and it will auto do it for you. It's a rotation from X vector. Because we need to consider X as forward. So it will treat that as the rotation forwards. So now as this thing goes around corners. Oh, I forgot. We need it to not do the whole rotation. Just a yaw. But it will now rotate. <laughs> so let's fix it so not to do uh, all of it. Uh, so the rotation here is um, we want it to break this. So split, split. And we just want the yaw. We'll keep the other two as they are. Um, and I want to keep the rotation of the yaw at minus 40. So I'm going to just put in minus 40. Hard code that in there. That matches what I already rotated here on this rotation here. I'm just going to take the tight arm length and make that a bit longer too. I'm going to change that to 600. Like that. Okay, so now we've got some more of a Crash Bandicoot looking camera. And you see it will turn based on the camera. Very nice. Now, one thing to note is my character's movement. So my character, I've taken out the control to the character's um, turning. As you can't really turn with the mouse anymore with this character. Okay, moving the mouse ain't doing nothing. So the movement of the forwards needs to be relative to the camera. So if I go to the player character and look at what we're doing here. So on the movement input, we're, setting a we're getting a control rotation and using that to determine which way is left and right. So rather than using the control rotation, we're going to use the camera's rotation. So we're going to do get player camera manager. And we're going to get the forward uh vector yeah just a forward vector and we want to split this so i'm going to split it because we only want the uh the no we want right vector oops right vector back to right vector and we want to split this and down here i want to make another vector I only want it to register the yaw of it. So that's the Z value. Zero and zero, rest of it, I can leave alone. Delete that. Now, the forward vector job. We're going to drag this down, make vector. Oh, wrong one. Make vector. And again, we just want the Z value, not anything else. Let me get rid of the rest of that. Okay. So we're getting the camera, getting the camera's right vector and forward vector, and just ripping out the your value of it. And that should make it so that if I hold down forwards as the camera turns, or not at all. No, did I not plug anything in? Did I detach it? Uh... No, it's not going to work with vector. I don't want to use vectors. I want to use the um, rotations. Get rotation. And we'll get camera rotation. Split that. Make rotator. And I want to get the right vector from that. There we go. That's what I'm going to do. Sorry, she knows. And similarly over here. 
We're going to get camera rotation, make rotator. Oh, that's so meant to go into your. Um, and then from here, get forward correct up from that rotation. Put that into there. Right. Let's try that now. So if I push play now. Yeah, yeah I can move. And I'm not going to touch the mouse. My cat should run forwards based upon how the cam camera turns. Like that. Ta da And same goes for backwards, left and right, it should all work the same. Lovely jumping. So our camera will now follow the spline. Our character will follow the camera's relative positioning. So my, we've got nice movement. And we can further test this uh, even greater by putting in obstacles and other things. So let's say, um, let's go and put in some meshes here. So let's say we've got something to jump over. If you want the camera to move with it, you just move the, the spline over the obstacle. Okay. But if you don't want it to affect it, you just let, leave the, the spline alone. Um, so I'm going to put in two. I'm going to put in one there. And I'm going to go into the spline here. Add a spline point. And I'm just going to move that over the top there. Okay. So it should ignore this one. And then it should follow this one. Okay. So if I go through here, I have to jump over that one. See how the camera doesn't move? But if I go over here, you see the camera gets higher and then it goes back down to follow me around. And the camera will lift. Uh, yeah, there you go, Marius. That's exactly that. Um, because, and the reason why it's lifting is because it's attached to that spring arm. And the spring arm is the thing that's moving along the spline. So imagine it's like a. Like almost like a monorail it's going along that track okay now one thing that does happen with um crash bandicoot games is the camera does move it does like change its like its um orientation to follow the character through like tunnels so let's create a quick tunnel and show how we could do something like that so let's bring in cube uh, and move that across like this. So, uh, hopefully that's tall enough. Uh, let me just see if that's tall enough. Um, so what we're expecting to happen here, we don't. What we don't want to happen is what. Yeah, it should be fine. So as you can see here, if I go through it, we don't want that. I want the camera to go under it with the player and track it. Okay, but I don't want to use a spring arm because the spring arms too unreliable it's going to bounce off all sorts of things so i don't want to do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a camera modifier to change the pitch of the camera so if i create in here a new blueprint class we can go to all classes and search for camera modifier now a lot of people don't know about these but camera modifiers allow you to change how the camera is presented on the screen so we're going to do um tunnel cam mod open it up and over on the functions here we've got blueprint modify camera modify post process we want to modify the camera so when you click on this and this is what you get so the inputs here give you the the camera's current location and rotation and all of that stuff here okay good delta time all, all that stuff then we've got return node here where this is the new location, rotation, and scale that you wanted to do. So at the moment, my camera is attached to the spring arm. So, well, first of all, I need to rotate the spring arm down and then rotate the, uh, and then put the uh, camera also more like that, straight. So that's what we've got to do. So let's think about how we can actually achieve this. So if I want to get the camera tool and uh, do all that sort of things, um we want to get a uh, player camera manager and we'll take this return value and cast it to my level camera uh we can't do casting in here can we uh in here we want to get uh oh no don't do that we're gonna get sorry we're gonna get the view target so we get player controller and then we get the view target, sorry. And then we can cast it. 
pass to level camera. So now I've got the cast here, I've got access to the spring arm and I can change what the spring arm does. So in here, um, uh, uh, now this is tricky now because I can't do this with, um, um we can't make it affect because the, the the nice thing about camera modifiers is that you can blend them in and blend them out so you don't have to worry about anything weird but with the camera in this case the new view location okay we're gonna okay we're not, we're not gonna do that like that um i'm gonna take the current view location and subtract a height from it so i'm gonna subtract here uh 200 okay and bring that down there the new view rotation is going to rotate to account for that so to get that i want to get which way my character is facing so if i get the player character i can get the uh i don't want to get the character facing i want to get the view target uh not view target the my son's decided to join me One second. Yeah. No, it's too good to be true. But be quiet. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna get the uh the pitch. I wanna um I can't know if this is local or world. Uh, I think it's world. So if I were to leave the view rotation at zero, 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 would that do it? I can't recall now. Right, you know, let's try it out. So if you go to class defaults, you've got alpha in and alpha out. This is the blend time. So let's say I want it to be a smooth of 0.5 oh, and 0.5. Okay, compile that, save that. Now to actually use a camera modifier, you go into your volumes and you should get in here if not we can make one nope we'll make one um so let's we'll make a volume so actor tunnel volume open this up and we're going to add a box collision and on the event graph for act we can overlap we're going to apply a camera modifier so we're going to get the player camera manager from there type in modifier and you'll see add new camera modifier so we can click on this and from here choose our camera modifier so i've got tunnel cam mod we do that um so on the camera modifier that's coming out of this, we can leave this alone and, and so forth, but we do want to actually remove it afterwards. So we're gonna take this return value and promote it to a variable. Cam mod. So when I do the end overlap, um, we can take it out. So camera modifier, I type in modifier, you'll see you've got remove camera modifier. And then you can see that reference is gonna come in here. Just drag this variable I've promoted here okay and that will blend out the alpha of that uh, one thing I do want to make sure of is that when we end overlap and begin overlap is that it's the char player character that's overlapping um, so simply just take other actor equal to oh dear get player character and plug that in so it's true do that I'm just going to copy this so we don't want enemies or Wampa Fruit or boxes or other things to trigger this off. We, we just want only the player to trigger it. So the player can get tested over here. And then we're going to add the modifier to the camera manager and store its reference. And we're going to going to remove that camera modifier after the fact. So let's now put that in and see how that works. So I'm going to take my color, tunnel volume. Let's rotate that around. Make it nice and big to cover the space we need it to cover.
Now we want it to overhang a little bit, so it gives a chance for the camera to actually do its thing. Um, but yeah, let's try that out. Oh, yeah, what's happened now? Um, I've got a feeling that the camera, where are you? Uh, level camera. Yeah, okay, it was local coordinates uh, that was changing, I think. Oh, no, no, no. Where's the hell the camera gone? <laughs> uh, hang on, if you click on camera there. Oh no, it says it's here. Uh... Okay, what's happened to that then? Did I assign the camera modifier? Yeah, I did. It might be relative. So when I'm setting it to minus no, I'm doing a relative. Minus 200 goes into there. I just can't see where the hell that is. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Stupid me. I'm being stupid. I forgot to actually plug these ones in. So rotation and field of view. Of course, I got to plug it in there. Right. So, try it again. Oh, and the door's here now too. Brilliant. What's wrong, sweetie? No. Come on, upstairs to bed. Come on. Go upstairs to bed. Or sleep, sleep in my bed if you want. Go sleep in my bed. Okay. Oh, God. Children. Drum me nuts. Um, yeah, so if I go through here. There we go. Yeah, so I just need to change that rotation now. So as I come out of there, we move the camera back go back through uh that blend's not happening though is it so let's figure out why that blend's not happening so modifier 0.5.5 uh, we may have to use this uh, no oh we might have to do it manually here been a while since I looked at these things. So let's do F interp 2. No, oh no, V interp 2, sorry. We'll do it. F V interp 2. Um target uh count is that, target is that, return value is that. Uh delta time, delta time, interp speed, we'll do three. Um okay, let's try that out now. Now we've still got to do the rotation and fix the rotation up, but we'll see if this works out for us now. We should hopefully get a smoother movement. Or no movement at all. See, I swear the alpha was really doing meant to do that. Um because I don't think this triggers multiple times. This only triggers once. So I'll put that in there like that. And it's only 0.5, but you should still see that. Let's try and debug for that. I don't get why it's snapping. Pretty certain it used to do the alpha for you. That's why it asks you for it. Um, maybe the volume. Maybe I'm missing something on here. Modifier. Uh, no. So if not, I'll look up the documentation for it in a second. But that should work just fine. If I just do print string there. Uh, 
It should only print once, is my understanding of it. Oh no. So it does it the whole time. Like, that doesn't make any sense. That's the point of the alpha. Blending in. See, it's a bit of one over this time. I'm sure. Yeah. Because I plugged that in straight away, that didn't do anything, did it? Because... Confused. Why is that not working? I'll look up the documentation and say I may be missing something. It does move a little bit. I'm noticing a, like, a little bit of movement. But it looks like it's only applying it, that movement once. Delta time is zero. Yeah, but if it's applying it multiple times, we should see that printing out every second. Like it should be printing like um, the time between frames. Yeah. See, it's fine. It's like it's only doing it once. It's like. Um, Hey, let me look just got the documentation of it in case I'm missing something simple. Kids, can you please go upstairs, please? Now. Um. Should be it. Um, Guys, I said go upstairs to bed. Dom? Yes. Uh, drop me nuts. It's not a change on the view location. It is changing like one once, but I don't think this bit is changing to update it. Um. But it should do it for you. That was the whole point of this alpha. I'm not missing a different one, right? No. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I could just do this camera location as a variable. We'll see if this works. I, I swear I don't remember doing this last time I used this. Um, so we'll drag it camera location, we'll set that to there. Plug that in. Da -da. Get it to pinch string now. And rather than using this view location, we use this camera location. Oh, that's not going to work though, because <sighs> that's not going to work. Um, This isn't going to work, but we'll try to see if this does it. But it is not going to work because that camera location needs to be set to the current camera location at first. So you get this weird behavior like that. So it does do it. But that's, again, not what the, al the alpha should be doing it for us. And I don't get why it's not. Uh. 
bed. Now. I don't know. That should be doing that. Looking at its documentation. Uh, it should, um, hold on. Yeah, it should be enabled. Yeah, initialize a new camera file. I shouldn't, I just, I shouldn't have to. Do that, I don't think. Because it should automatically be doing that. Yeah, I know. I don't know. What's going on? Do 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 do. No, the variable works. That like so the variable works as intended, like you would think it would. But the interp speed does not match the alpha. Like this is meaningless. The alpha is not being used at all. Like it's using my interp speed, so that's not at all being whatever. So um, doing this is not solving the the problem that we're we're seeing um, because the camera location needs to be set to my players camera location by default but we can't do that so it should be just this i don't get it <laughs> it should be just that oh i didn't want to do that subtract 200 plug that in that's all it should be uh right we'll do the rotation while we're here um so we rotation i need to rotate back up so i think up is negative so i have to do uh subtract oh wait no sorry to combine it with another rotator okay combine rotators and subtracting the y by minus this is gonna be a guess 30 and then plug that in I say it should be blending it. But maybe it's broken. I don't know. Uh, that's rolled it. Why's that rolled it? Okay. Why has it done that? Right, we'll work this out. Alpha in when blending in alpha proceeds from zero to one over this time is the time it takes to go from zero to one. Yeah, it should be that should be zero. That should be like one. It should be doing that. Um, it, like it should be like how long it takes to apply that function. So I don't get why it's not doing it. No, that's rolling it. I don't get. Oh, 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 oh. It's because this is. Um, uh, it, well, I did it right first time. It is this one, but this is a world rotation. I need it to be local to itself. So I need to get uh, the view rotation. I need to minus 30 from. No, that should be right. I'm very. Right, go upstairs now. Now. Uh, don't have kids. Um, 
I mean, I could put it higher, but you know, shouldn't put it five. Um, yeah, put it five. Oh, just cut straight to it. I don't get why the rotation is being so messed up because the current view rotation is there. I'm just changing it by minus 30. But it's minus 30. And I need to make this. Oh, God's sake. Okay, transform rotation. I need to transform this from local space to world space. So do minus 30 there. That into there. Get. Uh, player camera manager get it transform plug that into there um and that should make it more relative to what it should be whoa no although that seemed to be doing Do, 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 uh, interpolate the value between zero and two hundred, and add the result to the view location. Uh, oh, you could do, yeah. Let's try that. Oh no, we. Uh, yeah, we'll try that. If in tap two. And, oh, we'll, yeah, we'll do add. Do that to the Z, put that in there. Delta time there, speed three, current zero. Uh, no, 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 no. I know what you mean. F it up. Lerp. Vector. No, that's not going to work either because the delta time. No, upstairs now. Go upstairs. I'm getting fed up with these kids. Um, no, that won't work either because we can't interpolate the value because delta time doesn't change. F interp doesn't like you can do F interp, but it doesn't. I just said like, let me try to try doing this. I need to store the current value of the F interp. Uh, I guess we could make it a value again, but there's no change to what I did last time. It's the same same problem because if I do count location into uh, there and do uh, target location minus oh, I guess it might work actually get the time it's there it's at speed I don't know speed but then it doesn't make sense for the alpha doesn't do its job because that should be done because like, I shouldn't have to do interpolations like this um, uh, view location uh, no add Split that. That into there. That into there. Right, let's try that. And that didn't seem to work on the way out when we last did it. Yeah, see, so yeah, nothing. Who does? I think it might be just broken because they. It used to be a lot simpler. Current zero. Oh, I didn't set it to location. Whoops. Uh, my bad. There we go. Okay, it goes down. Does it come out just fine? Yeah, see, it doesn't come out either. Like, fine. Like, we're, we're faking the alpha. Like, the alpha should be handling the blend out just fine. Uh, I don't really understand why the alpha's not working.
Because what, what it used to do is just put in the change you want to happen into the end result, and then the alpha would blend it in and blend it out automatically for you. But I don't know why it's not doing it. We may just move on and just start doing boxes and crates, but um, that's just not doing anything. Um, that's confusing. Why did I decide not to do that? And I haven't missed a thing to turn on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll turn on exclusivity, but we've only got one modifier on it, so it shouldn't change anything. Hold on, I'm going to get rid of my kids because they're really bugging me. One second, feel it back. Okay, so we're going to move on from the camera modifiers. I don't know why it's not doing the blending. I don't, unless if we got a thought. We'll make a new camera modifier, uh, camera manager. Is there a setting on here we can change? No. Uh. No. Nah. Nah. This should be all you need to do. I don't get why the hell it's not doing it. Initialize the camera modifier. Like, this should just blend. But it's not doing alpha alpha you can get alpha so you can get that stuff but you can't do nothing with it it should do it all for, all for you i'm gonna see if anyone else has had problems with it um yeah, modifier do, 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 do. Pardon me. No, I don't know. We're going to move on. We'll move on. Um, it's just not going to work the way intended to. It should, the way it should work, as I said, is the alpha should blend in and blend out for you automatically. It's just not doing that. Um, legendary, it is, it doesn't do the job. <laughs> like, it, like, we can make it blend in using the F, F interp 2, but blending out doesn't let you do that. 
because the, uh, the mod only has the ability to modify the camera. As I said, this should be it, it should run this in reverse when you leave it. That's the whole point of it, but it's not. So it should be doing that, but no, never mind. Don't get it. I don't get it at all. Um, yeah, nothing. I have to try out on different versions of Unreal C, like older versions, and see if it, what happens there. Um, yeah, I know Legendary, but that's not the point. It shouldn't do that. <laughs> it shouldn't. Like, we could hack around it and figure out a way to do it, but even then, that won't really work with the modifier. Like, it, you, the modifier camera, you can't call this in. and so, there's, another one, there's not another one saying play it in reverse. It, it doesn't do that. So, um, we're not going to worry about that. We'll worry about that another time. I'll chase up the problem with that. Anyway, let's do crates. So, yeah, the, uh, camera stuff. We've got splines. We've got all that stuff moving. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do uh, boxes. Uh, so, the different types of crates. So, you need a parent crate because that's what they do. Um, uh, make a new folder here. Crates. Move that there. I mean, we could spend the whole time if you want trying to debug why it's not doing it, but I don't know. It'd be a, it'd be a, might be a waste of time. Okay, so in here, add a cube. I'm gonna do a chamfer cube. There we go. And I'll bring it up a little bit. Oh, too much. To there. Okay. So there is our base crate. Now. Um, crates have certain uh, abilities, so uh, some give you uh, one per fruit, some give you uh, checkpoints, some give you Aku Aku masks, some bounce off of and, and give you things, some are just bouncy, some are indestructible, yeah, 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 yeah. So, right now I'm thinking all crates can be destroyed and damaged. So... Uh, by default, anyway. I think uh, we could, we could, it doesn't really matter really. We'll do a crate here, and we'll do a standard. We'll make this the standard crate. We want to be the standard crate, so we can destroy it. So on any damage being received, we want to destroy actor. Okay, let's take one hit, and that's it. And, and then it can give Wampa fruit or whatever. Uh, we can destroy the actor. Okay, standard thing there. Uh, we could. We, we're not going to do bother with chaos. We could, but uh, but yes, you could do chaos. Um, I'm going to create a child of that one. So crate. Um, we'll do bouncy. Okay. Uh, event graph here. Now this is where it differs because when I land on a crate. Um, I want it to know that I've landed on the crate and so register that landing. So what I want to know is is probably add a little could, we couldn't do a, maybe we could do a little collision box on it. We could either do a little collision box and check the velocity of the thing that hit it there. Um, actually no, it'd be better. We check the velocity of the hit. So if I do hit event hit and I get the other velocity. And I want to know if the velocity is close to going down. Okay. Is it at least in the Z value. So I want to split this. Take the Z value. And I know if it's going down. So it'd be like less than uh, zero. If it's less than zero. That means the thing that hit it has landed on it. Okay. So I do that, and then if it's true, we're going to uh, launch character. Oh, no, launch. Uh, other here. We'll cast that to the player character, uh, to the character class. And then we'll launch them back in the air. Launch character. And we'll do a Z of 600. Mm. And we'll do a Z override. 
So it's going to override whatever Zad access movement we have and just launch us back in the air and compile that and save that. X and Y override if you want it to stop their movement. So when they hit it, they just go straight up, but we're going to make it bounce and go forwards for it to hit an angle. Okay, so let's test the bouncy crate out. Uh, bouncy crate is there. Uh, I might need to make them smaller. Oh no, it'd be fine. So, should bounce. No, not going to be bounce. Okay, that's probably because the hit isn't being detected. Now, the hit won't be getting detected because it's not technically a hit. It's like a, you're landing on it. So, how can we do that? Well, we'll double check, actually. Let's print string the hit here. Make sure that's not getting triggered. And yeah, see, it does when I walk into it. Oh no, there you go. It is doing it. So let's work out what I. Oh, I oh, know why. Oh no. Right, let's print out a velocity. That should be fine. Okay. It's going to output zero, isn't it? Because that's when we landed. Ugh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Then another one we can do is hit normal. So rather than the velocity of the character, we get hit normal, and we compare that with the up vector. So the hit normal would be in the Z. So we're just going to do. Break that open and put the Z into there. Negative is uh, do 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 uh, might be our way around. That one. There you go. Boink, 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 boink. Yay! Boink, boink. Boink, boink. Nice. Um, so that is if the Z value is less than zero. So negative. Uh, normal is going up. So we only want to do that a couple of times before it dies. So we're going to do uh, variables um, and do hits. And do integer. And we'll launch the character first. And then we'll take the hint up. The hits. And we'll decrement it. If the hits value is less than or equal to zero, we're going to destroy the actor. Okay. So let's set my hits here by default to like three. So I can be able to bounce off it three times and it'll disappear. So we go up to it. One, two, three. Yay! Uh, yes, we'll we'll conti we continue the fire team series. Yes, uh, Chaz. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, so there we go. So um, we've got uh, a crate, a bounty crate. Um, we haven't got a spin attack yet. We haven't done a spin attack, but we'll just focus on the other ones. So the other one we're going to have is a... Actually, let's do a spin attack. Let's do the spin attack. So we go to my inputs. And let's create a new input action. Spin attack. Now, I don't have any animation of the spin attack, so I'm just going to do like a fake little thing. Um, but, do that. Oh, sorry, don't have to do anything here. Uh, yeah, no, don't have to do anything there. And on the context, we'll just add it as a mapping. And I'll do it with the uh, F key. And hit save. It doesn't have an empty input. Oh, whoops. I forgot to put it on there. There you go. Do, 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 do. Okay. So, um, go back to my character here. And we are going to initiate the spin attack with IA spin attack. Now, when we trigger the spin attack, we're going to spawn a little thing on top of our character and attach it to our character. 
Um, so let's go into doing that here. We'll just make a new blueprint here and call it spin attack. And this would be just a sphere collision, really. And it want to be sizable, so bigger than the character, obviously. So we'll do a radius of 130. Like that. There we go. And the go to the details here and do the lifetime, uh, lifespan, sorry, of the class default. So there you go. And set this to whatever lifespan. Now, if you've got animation, tie it to this, the, the animation uh, length, but we ain't got an animation. So we'll make it up. We'll put in like 0.5, so half a second, and then it destroy itself. Okay. So on the event graph, when we do uh, spawn this thing in, we will do act begin overlap, other actor, and we're going to do apply damage. The base damage here is going to be one, doesn't really matter. And the damage causer will be get player character. Like so uh yeah do that and then we're going to go into our player character here and on triggered no start it doesn't mean that's on triggered or started we'll do started um we'll do spawn actor from class spin attack put on our transform we always want to spawn it ignoring all collisions and then um uh, ignore blocking yeah always spawn and then from there uh, we then want to attach it attach actor to actor turn actor itself location will snap rotation tool snap scale will snap so if I drag out the other crate There you go. There you go. Done. Nice. So we can now got this spin attack. We can't see it, but we're spinning. <coughs> okay, so TNT and Nitro. So create another child of this. TNT crate. And the big thing with this one is when we jump on it, we want it to, rather than bounce us, we want it to start a countdown. So we're going to go back to our bouncy one. We're going to take the front bit of this code. Take this. And this branch it. And go to the event graph. On hit event. We'll do this. Hit normal. And onto there. So with the hit normal there in place. Um, we are going to now start a countdown. So we're going to do set timer by um, you know, event time of three seconds I believe it is on those things and the event here I'm going to drag this down and do custom event for explode and here we'll just do a spawn in fact I'll just add it on this thing um, particle system cascade particle system I choose the built in explosion yeah uh, I just want to turn this off by default so don't auto activate off there we go. And then drag out my particle system on explode and we're going to take it to activate. And then destroy actor. Okay. Um, in fact, actually, what I'm going to do instead is I'll just do destroy actor on its own. And then on destroyed event, we'll put the explosion. The reason why I'm doing that is because crates by default behavior is if I attack them or give them any damage, it'll explode. So if I just do event destroyed and do an explosion on that, it would make sense and, and be used for other things. I don't have to replicate the code again. I could just use it over and over and over again. So uh, it will deactivate the, the explosion and that's where I can also apply damage to things around me. So apply radial damage. Base damage is one, I'm not fussed by that. Origin, the actor location. Uh, radius, uh, our box is 50 radius, so we'll do like a 80. Uh, damage causer, self. 
and we'll do full damage. Okay. So let's put that in there. Create an TNT. And so if I walk up to it, it should explode. Oh, it won't work. Why not? It's not working. Uh, probably because it's getting destroyed too quickly. Okay, we'll put this up here. Uh, I'll tell you actually what we'll do. Uh, we'll spawn the explosion um, actor. And we'll put that on there instead. Yes, keyed. Explosion. Uh, we'll turn it off by default. Oh, no, we'll leave it on. We don't need to turn it off, sorry. Um, and then on begin play, we do apply damage. Apply radial damage. One, origin, that's our location. Uh, radius, 80, damage cause ourself, and do full damage. And the lifespan of this will do very short as well. 0.5 again, really cheap and easy. Um, and then on create a TNT, rather than putting it on here, <coughs> when it's destroyed, we'll just spawn in the, um, the actor in class and choose explosion. We get actor transform and let's delete that from there. Okay, right, so let's go ahead and test that out. Uh, oh, F, there you go, there you go, explosion. B. Okay, so um, we can do different crates now. We can break those. Uh, let's just check, I can bounce on top of this one and count down to three. One, two, three. Cool. So we've got a bounty crate, a damage crate, and also an explosion crate um, with TNT. And uh, yeah, and the best thing about the crates is because they will cut stem from one parent class, is when you do it at the end of the game, you want to count up how many crates you've got left in the level. It's very easy to do that uh, because you just get all actors of class and count how many exist. So uh, let's make our tnt have a countdown timer on it oh hello didn't want to do that and on here we're going to add a widget now best doing this with a texture but i don't have a texture to use so i'm just going to use a widget time being and we'll put that on here we'll create the widget and do timer widget And it's a very simple one. It's literally just a text text value. So we should drag that in. Text done, done, and put that in like so. So now what we're gonna do is text value is make it variable. So if you have anything in a widget that needs to change over time, it needs to be variable. So tick that. Uh, we'll name it because we're good game designers. That's what we do. Um, timer text. And then on the graph of the timer text here, we need to know what timer we're using. Okay, so we're going to click on here, timer, and this will be a timer handle. So whenever you create a timer, you get a timer handle coming out of it. We're going to send it over to this widget and tell it to use this timer, okay? And on the, uh, oh, actually, what would be best? We could, there's a few ways of doing it. We could do it with a timer handle or we could, uh, no, we want a timer handle. What do we do? <coughs> we could do a, a dispatcher to start the timer. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll do that. So my crates TNT here. I'm gonna do an event dispatcher for um is triggered or is armed, whatever you want to do. And when it's is armed is tr uh, triggered, we're going to send over the, the timer handle. So on the inputs of our event dispatcher, we're going to search for timer handle. Like that. Timer. And over on our event graph, when we uh, start the timer over here, 
we're going to compile that first of all, drag in our event dispatcher, call it, and we can plug in the timer there. <clears throat> okay, so on this widget, we're going to just assign that to our timer widget, like that. And on the timer widget, we're going to want to know what we're attached to. So I need on here the crate it's referring to. So crate TNT. And we'll make that. Uh, we don't need to make it editable actually. We'll just leave it like that. And on the construct here, we'll take the crate. And we have to bind that event. So we do bind event on armed. Uh, is armed? What do I call it? Is armed? There we go. So when the construct is at the start of the game, it's going to bind this event to it. So do create event and a timer armed. And that's going to now pull through the timer that the armed by the crate. The crate is going to be triggered. That's going to set this off. And now we can actually use this to calculate various things. So uh, what I'm going to do is update the timer here to uh, tell you the update. Sorry, tell the timer to update the text based on how much time is left. So we're just going to do it on tick. Um, it's a very minor thing to worry about. So fine here. So on timer here, we're going to get that. We get time remaining by handle, and we're going to turn it into an integer. So for that, we're going to truncate it. Truncate just lops off the decimal point bit of it. So if it's two point five, it'll go down to two. Okay. So we're going to truncate. We're going to take the text value and do set text. And plug that in. That will do. Okay. Now, the uh, when the timer is armed, we just want to set the timer there, and then tell the tick here to trigger. So what we want to do is to do, we just gate it, and open the gate like that. And that's all we've got to worry about. So the tick's not going to do anything until. The timer's been armed, then it will start updating the timer. Um, right, so all I've got to do now is go to my crate on the TNT and on begin play is take the widget here and get the widget. Uh, we're going to get user widget object because the widget, this widget, refers to the component. This refers to the actual widget itself. So I need to get the widget here. But this returns a generic object. So you do need to cast this to the timer. One you want to do. So cast to timer widget. Like that. And for the timer widget here, I'm going to set the crate. To self. There you go. So, on begin play, we're taking the widget, telling the timer to set itself to the crate, and then the bindings can happen when it gets called over here. So, all that's left to do is to put the widget in its place. So, I'm going to do draw size of uh, 50 by 50. And put that there. Five. So you get no Z fighting. And um, yeah. And then on the oh we'll actually want to make that draw size 100 by 100 don't we? I'll do actually less than that. I'll do 80 by 80. Uh no, 50. That's definitely what we want there. Okay. And uh, so we're gonna go back to my timer widget, go back to the designer, and the default text for this is gonna say TNT. File save. So Where's my TNT there is? If I were to jump on it. Boom. Yay. So now we've got a cool looking TNT block set up. And we can now place our things on our level. We can add multiple things of these. Like that. Um, so the next thing to worry about with the 
uh, crates here. So if I were to destroy, do a spin attack, I'm going to destroy both of those. I'm not too sure. Does Crash Bandicoot, if you were to stand next to a tower of crates, would you destroy just the one next to him? Or also two next to him? I can't remember. If you know, let, let me know. At the moment, that will detonate both of those. Um, I believe you can just, you can aim it, can't you, to just do one. That's right, isn't it? You can definitely do that. Uh, that's okay, so I'm just going to change the shape of my spin attack. So it's quite large here, so a sphere may not be right for us. Um, so if I go to the scale, I'll change the scale in the one here to be 0.2. It's going now. Nah, can't we do that? Okay, that's fine. We'll just change it to a box. Do, 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 do. Destroy it as his size. Oh, in that case, I can leave it as is then. If that's the case. I can't remember. I've closed the, the video gameplay loop now. So. If it destroys as his size, I'll leave it as is because that's his size, I believe. Um, actually, no, I'll make it smaller. That would be 80. What height is he? Uh, 90. There's that. 90. So, does that change what we can do there? No. No. But obviously, if you can have. Oh, hello. If we do this, you get that sort of mentality, but it doesn't. Does it really. I don't know. I can't remember if you can aim just one to take it. I would swear you could just take out one because they do a puzzle, don't they? Where there's a TNT there, a TNT at top, and one in the middle, and you could aim it to take out the one in the middle. Maybe the spin tag is a bit smaller. Uh, let's do 60. Mm. Okay. What if I spawn the spin attack on the floor? No. That don't sound right. Uh, let me make it visible so it makes it a bit easier to see what we're doing. I feel that's wider than that. I think I might have to use a box. Jump and spin. The spin part is horizontal spin that touches the collision. Yeah, jump and spin. The spin part is horizontal spin that touches the collision. Okay, so it's only when you're jumping, it's a thinner, it's a thinner spin. Okay. If that's okay, that, that, that makes sense. Okay, so let's make it so uh, the spin attack, if we're in the air, is going to be special to attack. So we just do a box collision. And make it thinner. Yeah, like a round disc, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, we could we could make a mesh and make it visible and just use the mesh as a sort of collision here. But again, you know, it doesn't really matter. Oh, actually, no. Oh, I'll show you how to do that. <laughs> I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to set mesh here. I'm going to change this to a cylinder. Uh, this one, the thin one we're in. Yeah, that'll do. And we'll just spin that down. Okay. Like that. And I'll change the size of this back up to 80. There we go. Right, so the point of this disc is to be the in-air one. So I'm gonna change the collision of this to overlap everything. So change the block all to overlap all. And hit compile. And also, we want to make it not visible. So, we're going to go into the rendering section, wherever you may be. There it is. And we're going to change hidden game to true. Uh, okay. So, yeah, we do that. And then we have a boolean here. 
we do is in air and by default that's going to be off and this the static mesh the air one i'm going to change the name of this one to air spin oh that's a bad way of spelling it air spin there we go and this one will make ground spin um air spin will change it to have no collision by default um so where's the collision stuff i'm gonna pass it and i let's change that to no collision or uh, no we'll do overlap all but i'm going to change it to custom and change collision enabled to be no collision so it's all ticked on for me i just need to change this collision enabled so on the event graph on begin play if is in there true it is true I want to turn air spin on so set collision enabled i mean you could probably just do two types of spin attacks but to do uh query only it's true and we'll turn ground spin off set collision enabled to no collision and if it's false we leave it alone okay so if i were to jump and oh 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 ah it's attached to me okay we don't want to attach either don't we um also yeah we haven't triggered this on there i'm, I'm forgetting all sorts of things i'm fa like fazzled kids have really messed me up um back to the player character i'll say uh spin attack well we need to make the is in there here editable and exposed on spawn back on my player character we need to know if i refresh this is an error now appear here and i'll do cat movement is falling and that'll go into there and we're only going to attach it to the actor if is falling is uh false so if i put that into a branch false will be attaching it to the actor so it doesn't like drag through the air. Um, so I can do that. This. Yay. Like that. But if I'm standing still, let's get both. Ta da Okay. Um, uh it's better than an attack animation than a mesh but for a test i think this is good right even if you have the animation i still wouldn't rely on the animation collision because your animation is not colliding or anything you still want to spawn in a separate collision for the attack um the animation is just a visual thing you don't want to rely on animations to actually handle anything to do with collision test or anything like that you want it to be as simple as possible uh and with crates here um uh, we want all our crates uh the people here we'll make static mesh here root and we'll go down to physics simulate physics constraints we're going to lock the position in x and y and lock all their rotations i just realized i'm covering it up lock position x and y lock rotation x y z you can you can yeah you you can do it but for their swings, they're doing it with a line trace system with the the swing of the sword. Crash just spins around; it doesn't really do anything. Um, so you must it's better off just spawning in an actor that does it. Um, bu -bu 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 yeah, because like you know, uh, Dark Souls and all that, they still use line trace weapon sweat stuff. Um, but with Crash, there's no point. It just spins in a circle. Make life a lot easier for yourself. Um, yeah, so locking into that position there. Um, that's going to affect things, isn't it? Yeah. Like that. Uh, yeah, so these should now drop. Oh, the spin attack lasts for too long. Oh, 
You set time collision when you turn it off and on. Again, you don't want to rely on actual collisions with the actual animation. Your thing you're describing with Conan is a line tray system. You don't want to rely on actual collisions with meshes. Um, it's dodgy. Uh, the reason why you don't want to do it is because it can cause a lots of uh, well collision issues. So if you're uh, if you're swinging against something. Uh, you're, you don't want the mesh to get stuck and then it gets stretched because it, the, the bone got stuck for it. Um, it's typically quite bad. Obviously, it looks weird. Um, so that's why when you do it with an animation-based system, when you're animating, you're drawing a trace from the bones out and you're working out the traces and how they hit and what they're hitting and doing damage with like that. If you want to get like mesh accurate uh, hits and if you were to swing against a wall you're doing the same thing but when you hit a wall you just tell it to stop playing animation um, but you know you don't rely on you don't actually turn on the collision of the character because other problems that can, uh, can cause is if you turn on the collision of the mesh it may have issues with like the capsules that you're against that could be uh, other objects in the scene things that your character's holding uh, it, it, you raise into lots of little problems so it's a lot easier not to do that so don't do it. I can almost guarantee you Conan Exiles is doing it with a tray system, not a actual collision with the animation. Um Yeah, so it's been a time I want to change the lifespan of this to be smaller. Again, if you have an animation, just tie its lifespan to the animation. Um, but in this case, that matters. Okay. So we can now drop crates. So I can turn trigger that one off. Yay! Uh, yep, cool. Okay, so we've got TNT, bounty crates, phys physics in our crates. Um, we've got uh, nitro crates, are so simple enough to do. Um, it would be put mostly the same as TNT, really. So go to the crates here. Uh, we go to Crash TNT and we'll duplicate that. And it's been Nitro. And on the Nitro here, uh, what's this error? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we're not, we're, yeah, okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, we don't want a timer anyway. Boop, 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 boop. Um, there's no timer. We are just going to destroy actor. Um, when you just touch it, isn't it? It's not even like when you land on it. It's just if you touch it, destroy actor. Like this. Um, yeah. So bump into it, destroy actor. That causes explosion. Uh, the widget, though, we don't say TNT. We'll just change the name of that to something else. I'll just duplicate that and do Nitro widget. Again, it'd be better as a texture, but yeah. Don't have a texture, don't have time to do a texture. So we'll just do this instead. And on the crate for Nitro, we just change that widget to say the Nitro widget. Um. Yeah, and then we can have a nitro. Oh, hello, nitro. I just bump into it. It triggers all of them. Nice. And I can do that. I've got a bouncy one. And off we go. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so um nice we've got camera stuff going on we've got crates going on obviously we can keep adding crates as for enemies and traps if i was doing this properly with actual enemies i even wouldn't bother with ai for enemies the enemies are pretty basic they just either stand still or they do a simple patrol pattern they don't do anything really um so don't worry about including things like ai controllers behavior trees anything like that you don't need to worry about that um you just make them patrol back and forth for example so let's do a, a very basic enemy. Uh, how much time we got? Well, we're over time, but we'll try and do one anyway. 
Um, so we do a character still. And we do enemy. Um, yeah, whatever. And we'll give this a stupid mesh. Anything will do. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make him look even weirder. I'm just going to go like this, like that. <laughs> you know, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> the, the capsule, I was going to change the size a bit to match that. Um, that's impossible. There we go. Uh, uh, uh. That sounded like you could do movement on supply and just pair up the walk animation back and forth. Yeah, they literally, that's all you could, you could do that, yeah. Um, and, I mean... Um, yeah, simple as that, really. You can just move it along a spline. If you want them to actually navigate, if you've got, like, dodgy terrain, you want them actually moving along the terrain. I mean, you could do, like, a simple AI thing on it. Um, so, for example, we could put in a... Um, uh, let, okay, let's do a simple AI thing on it. So, not even AI, it's just pathing. So, let's say it does move back and forth, okay? The variables in here, it would be um, point... Uh, a, which would be a vector, and point B, and we'll have direction stored as a float, okay, um, or float well, integer, integer, fine, um, and then on our begin play, we'll actually we have a custom event here. So move to point, and we can tell it to just do AI move to the pawn of itself, and the destination here will depend on the direction. So I'm actually going to change this wording here to be um, is a to b, for example, um, and that'll be a boolean. Do that is a to b and if it is a to b we'll do a select vector if it's true that means we want to put point b as the it's gonna get confusing <laughs> i should change this point one point two but in mind uh point b is gonna go into the a slot a means true okay b means false so we're gonna put another one in there and that goes through there the on success is we're going to flip the A to B around. So do um, not boolean. And set that back to itself. And that will just flip it around. So if it's true, it becomes false. False becomes true. And then we'll call this thing to move again. Move to point. Okay. And it will just loop that back and forth. Now with these two points, point A and B, I want to make these both editable. And show 3D widget. Editable. Show 3D widget. Compile that. And on the begin play, we're going to do move to point. And I'm going to do is A to B as well as editable. Like that. Uh, okay. So, if I put this into my scene now. There's my enemy. And uh, I'll need a nav mesh, and I can just do a little nav mesh just around him, for example. Like that. You know, that'll do. Don't need anything crazy. And with him in particular, you're going to go in, you can see point A and point B. You can click on them, and you can move them out. So that's point B, I'm going to put that there. Point A, I'm going to put that over here. Yeah. And... On his actual character, I need to tell him, on his class defaults, not to use the your. Instead, I'm going to tell him on his character movement here to rotate based on movement. So, I want rotation to movement. So, when we turn that on, he should move. Hold on. Uh, why am I getting an error there? Oh, that's the nitro. You should move. Oh, wait. Uh, did I change? Uh, AI. 
I thought, no, I thought AI Cats was already bigger. Taste in Worlds. Yeah, Taste in Worlds. Uh... Yeah, why is it not working? Move to point, move to point. Oh, no. Why aren't you moving, mate? Let's tell the nitro crate to stop arming itself with the uh, widget. Don't care about that. Okay. Um, yeah, why is it not moving? Now, I had this problem the other day with someone else's project I was trying to fix, and it turned out it's just a random bug. I don't know what caused it. We just remade the level, and it worked. So, hopefully, it's not that. But that should work just fine. Let me turn on debug. Hang on, one second. I'm gonna test this theory out. Hold on. If I save everything. And say, I don't know what caused this bug in this other person's project, but it was literally, we just made the level again. So, if I go into here, let me just first of all try duplicating this one. Uh, that's actually... Uh, yeah, we can't duplicate it. Okay. Hang on, I'll just make another level. Let's quickly test this out. Mm. And I just want to see right there. Mm, like that. Point B, point A, and simulate. Oh, okay, no, something else is wrong. Uh, this is on 521, so I haven't used 521 before today, so... Mm, but it should be this obvious thing broken. Uh, okay, let's break this down. So let's make sure that's getting called. Um, it's not. What? How is that not getting cold? Uh, what? <laughs> okay, let's try delaying it. That sometimes helps. Um, now it's doing it. Right. Okay. Let's go back to the other one. Oh, no, 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. And it's local location. Thank you very much. Yep, that's why. That's why. I always, always forget that these things are local. Sorry. Yeah, well done. You got it. Um, We need to convert this to a world. So, invert... No, just transform. Uh, yeah. Every time I forget their their um local. There we go. Now it'll work. There we go. Right. Okay. So uh, let's also slow them down a bit. So max walk speed. Change it to two hundred. Save. Um. Okay. Um. So it didn't turn round again. So it's going to that point there. But not turning round again. Why not? So it goes through there. Is A to B is false. So it's picking point A, which is doing it going to point A, doing that. 
We flip that around. Move to point. Happens again. Yes. Uh, make sure. Just pip string that there. Oh, wait, my pinch string's not showing. Yeah, true. Happened here. Um, Why is it not going? It's true, a pit point B. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's just check the, the failure logs. So it must be failing. Pinch train. Okay. So I'm hoping my logs here. Dock that. And hit the plate. Aborted. Interesting. Why did it abort? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yep, yep. Let's check the mesh. Make sure there's no collision on the mesh. Uh, 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 uh. Yep, set it off. Uh, no collision. No, nope, still doing it. Uh, Wagen, you don't need to do that because you you trans you transform it with that node I just showed you. You don't need to save the transform. You just get to this. It transforms a local to the variable there. Oh wait 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 wait. Oh, I know I know I know the problem I know the problem I know the problem. If I, okay, I don't have a problem. It's because point A and point B are relative. So I need to do, yeah, the transform's changed. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Wajon. Yeah, you're right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Right, let's just convert them up here then. Easier way of doing it. Uh, we'll just take that off there. Oh my god, mouse, work. There we go. Point A in there. And set that to point A. Do that. And do the same thing again. Point B. And set point B. Plug that in. There we go. And now don't worry about transforming it here. We just plug that straight into that. Uh, it won't always be true. No, because this flips the boolean around. So when you knot a boolean and set it back to itself, it just flips it back and forward. Um, yeah. There we go. Doing this thing. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, just notice the TNTs trigger. Do TNTs trigger when you you can walk into TNTs, but you just can't jump on them, can't you? Uh, spin on them. Um, go create TNT. Where's the create TNT? Event graph. Event hit. The Z is less than zero. Yeah, actually, right. So why is it doing that? Uh, confused. Hang on. Let's print the hit normal. And let's just enable the screen messages because it's annoying to go into that again. Hmm. 
they were saying zero so how the hell is it getting Huh? How's it doing that? I'm not using less than or equal to, am I? Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. Does it count negative zero as that? Oh yeah, well, um, we'll just um, check if it's uh, equal to minus one. Oop, minus one instead. I wanted to make sure it took into account other shapes, though, in case we did other shapes, but never mind. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, nitro, that does work. Uh, oh, hold on. That, uh, what's this? Okay, so... Oh, yeah, we've got to change it on the TNT one, uh, the bounce one as well. Do, 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 do. Again, doesn't take into account of things that are going to be... At weird angles and other shapes, but yeah, it'll do. Uh, 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 uh. How's it destroying the other blocks when it explodes? So the reason it explodes other crates is because all crates, by default, when they receive any damage, will be detonated and it will be destroyed. When a TNT get block gets destroyed, it generates an explosion. The explosion applies damage to a radius around it. And these are getting caught in that radius and applying damage and getting destroyed. So that's how that's working. Um, now, obviously, not all crates do that. Um, some crates are indestructible to explosions and, and generally you in general. So if you want it to not do anything like that, I mean, you, we could show you that one. Hang on, a metal crate. So if I create a child class of crate, metal, and this one... We're just going to override the damage event. So we go event, any damage. And I was going to leave it like that. So now I can't destroy this block because it's technically a metal block and can't be damaged. So if I go into there, I can spin on it, doesn't do nothing. Jump on it, does nothing. Yeah. If I were to put it with the TNT ones, like this. It should be left alone yeah um, because they're not triggered the same way um, so I've just I've written it and the same goes for the metal bouncy ones if you want a metal bouncy one um, I'd say take the bouncy I'll just duplicate that one bouncy metal and in here we're doing the event hit is doing the thing where it launches a character I don't care about the amount of hits it has because it can't be just destroyed and also want to take away the damage problem. So event A damage, leave it blank. It overrides it and stops it from doing the previous code. So oh, let's put that in there. So this one's a metal bouncy one. So this one should let me bounce for as much as I like. Like that, okay. Cool. So. They are um, how uh, we got those various things in there. Um, so obviously, when he hits me, we want him to do damage to me. But we're not we're not doing a whole damage system for that. We'll leave that alone for because we're really late. We've already gone double the amount of time we normally do. Um, we'll make it so we can damage him and take him out. So if I go to enemy and I say any damage, uh, we'll just do destroy actor. I know they spin off for going a distance. Um, I've got an idea how you would actually try and do that, but for now, we won't bother with that. Um, but if I go up to him here, we should be able to just damage like that and crack on with the rest of the level. Even though the modifiers, for some reason, don't work. Um, anyway. Um, not too bad. We've got pretty far with doing the Crash Bandicoot thing. Um, 
the thing about what what actually remains left is just different types of crates still the aku aku mask checkpoints saving all, like the, the stuff like that um it, it enables and disables we tried that already olima it doesn't do it uh we yeah we've done that um I, I mean i'll try it again we have one last crack at it um on the top of volume we did enable modifier and i mean i remove it i could do disable modifier we did try this last time it just didn't work uh the camera yeah is working on a spline so it doesn't take you away from it yeah see not clean yeah we don't remove it though okay it doesn't add it um let's see well i've used them in the past it never had to do anything crazy like that let's do that Uh, probably because it's been removed. You forgot to turn off that checkbox. Uh, uh, what checkbox? Did I forget? Tunnel on the Oh, we were doing this before. Let me just take off this stuff because this wasn't what we wanted to do. It's, oh, exclusive. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Uh, yeah, we tried that out, didn't we? So it just snaps to that. And just snaps out of there. Don't know. Weird. Don't know. Weird little problem. So I've used them before and it worked fine when I last used them. Yeah. Don't know if they got broken in the latest update. I'm going to check it out on the older version and see if the older version worked. Actually, let's do it right now. Let's let's actually do this right now. I'm going to load up like Unreal 4. Because that's when I probably last used camera modifiers. So hang on. One second. We'll do it right now. Because it's driving me mad. So I was doing it to help uh, someone do like a Resident Evil type thing before. Um, and it worked, and it, I say it worked fine. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, let's launch oh, uh, 426 because I've got to update 427 and I don't want to do that. All right, let's try it in 426. Probably actually, well, it might have been 426 when I last used them. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Let the modify enable and just change the intercept height from minus 200 to zero when there's no collision. Again, you could, yeah, that's doing it all manually. You shouldn't have to do it manually. Um, it just doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work as it's meant to. I'm loading up 426 because I swear that's how it worked in 426. <laughs> What do I think about the 427.2 version? Mm, I can't remember it that much. What was new about it? I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm saying a tunnel. We don't have a blend thing for it, do we? Blend, no, see? Blend? No. Any other modifier things in here? Uh, nope. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Forces it's taking a sweet time to load up. I did. Oh, is it trying to update it? Uh, please don't. What's the branch on the disabled bit? Um, if it's just the player character leaves it, that's all. Uh, me, you can use the spline to set the whole camera behavior. Um, but we can't easily blend it out because it doesn't call the function again on blend out. It only calls it, I mean, like when you leave the block, it doesn't, there's no, it doesn't, there's no function to call when it leaves the block. It just stops calling that function. So it doesn't work. You'd have to do it manually on like this volume, for example. That's to Ledger Day, by the way. I'm not. No, 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 no. Like. I mean, yeah. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I got it. Yeah, I could. I mean, you could do. It's a packy workaround. Again, it shouldn't work like that. But yeah, you could do. Um. Do, 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 do. Um. Uh, like, yeah, okay, here. Um, uh, Christ, for, I haven't seen 426 for a long time. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Sure. Mm -mm 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 Camera location, target, threat to variable, set to target location, uh, there. Make. There. We start that out from minus two hundred. Um, no, what am I doing? Uh, location. It's this one. Sorry, sorry, my bad. Uh, uh. On to there. There we go. Um. Yeah, and then what you're saying is you go into tunnel here. And when I dis, uh, don't disable it, you're saying just change the target. Uh, oh, hold on. It doesn't know what type it is. Okay. Let's do cast to it here. Let's say this is a very hacky, like, messy way of doing it. But, yeah, you can do it like this. Uh, we shouldn't have to enable it. it should, that enable it should enable it by anyway. Um, so that's tunnel cam mod. Set target to uh, plus two hundred. I think.
Yeah, I mean, kind of. I mean, it's not. It's like it's it's it. Yeah, I, yeah, kind of. Uh, I've got four two six. I'm gonna try and put it in a. Um. If I migrate that mod over. Uh, transactions. Migrate. Save. Um. Okay. Uh, what do I call it? Is my project uh, two? Oh, whoops. Let me check. It is my project two. Yeah, my project two. Uh, content. Yeah, add multiple, yeah, true, I do add multiple modifiers, that's probably why, yeah. Um. Did it not do it? Oh, I'll tell you, I'll just make a new one from scratch in there. Just test that now. Um. Mm. Camera. So you just do uh, this minus. Oh, forgot. <laughs> uh, this one. There you go. Two hundred. Put that in there. Put that in there. Class defaults. Alpha in time. Point five. Point five. Play like cat scared crap. Okay. Um, just put box edition in it. <sighs> oh, oh my god. Do, 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 do. Um, now, like that. Ah, oh, would be helpful if I could see what the play thing was doing, just make it pretty big. There we go. Yeah, uh, no, I'm still doing it. Well, what's the point of the alpha blend time? Uh, but yeah, you, the, yeah, the reason it was compounding is because I didn't take it off the uh, modifier list. Uh, this thing. Oh. Get up again, play. Um. And on begin overlap, we just set the target there to minus 200. Nice. Hello. Uh, that was probably because uh, by default it is on at zero, potential to zero. There we go. Yeah, so you, you this would work, but it shouldn't work like this. Yeah, this one has to be to zero, yeah. So it's going up too high, isn't it? Uh mm-mm. Yeah, okay, it works. But that blend time makes no damn sense. 
Why the hell is that there? <laughs> right, let's do it, yes. Uh, where is it? Tunnel. Tunnel. So, like, this bit is the confusing thing. Yes, you can get the alpha time and all that in here, but... This should be what that does. Don't know. Because the problem is, is obviously you want to, you want to, um, it should support multiple modifiers at the same time. So layer on the top of them and it prioritizes which one on top. Hence why you get priority thing on it. But to do that all manually would be a nightmare. The whole point is for this to do that. I'd be interested to see like, do I, yeah, if I open the source of this, let's have a look. Uh, oh, oh, oh. It's decided to open up in all sorts of things. Okay. Um, uh, oh, hold on. It's opened up a loads of things. Hang on. Uh, what? Oh, Visual Studio, you're fantastic as always. Yeah, like even the commentary of it, it says here scaling by the alpha happens after this in code, so no need to deal with that in the blueprint. So it that's obviously not the intention. The intention is for the alpha to blend it. It's just not doing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely its behavior, but it's not doing it. Um I don't have 5.2 source, so I can't look at the source code of it. Um, I have 5.1 source, but well, that's long. Hold on. Let's see if I can find it. Hang on. We're on a hunt now to find out what why it's not doing it. Hold on. Um. <laughs> Uh, camera modifier. I'll fix my screen so you've got something else to look at. But I'm trying to find it.
So, mm, you could probably lerp it as well using the alpha rather than using f interp to is use the lerp here um and then it would make use of the actual alpha values i'm so i'm still trying to find the actual source code it won't windows be in windows um now it should actually take like five seconds because that's what i think i've set to before to travel between here and there no all right fair, fine fair enough it's just not working <laughs> it's just just refuses to give me the value because alpha according to the header file at least should be printing out like the actual value changing over time but it's not doing it oh wait it's it's because we added it right at the start so it is changing it's just changing before i get there all right oh yeah it's because yeah it's because i'm doing it here it's activating by straight away because we do that here um disable it straight away disable modifier media and we do enable right now uh yeah, so the alpha is just not doing its job at all. Like it's doing the blend in, but it's not doing the blend out. Oh, it's because we're not disabling it. Yeah, so I say it's not working as it should be. That's definite. Because the alpha, when you like leave it here, we should be disabling it like this. Um, then rather than doing it through media. Should see the alpha value change, but even that's not five seconds. That is, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing. So it goes up, it goes down. That's still not blending it. I don't know what the hell it's doing. <laughs> it should be doing it, but it's not. Um. Because when you enable it, it should be doing the alpha. And the alpha should be doing the alpha between 0 and 1. Camera location, the target. Uh... I'll take the view location here. Let's break this open. And put that in there. Let's see if that does it. Oh. Right, so that's now using the alpha blend time, but it started at a weird point. It's adding on. Uh, trying to understand why, how it's working then, because it's doing. If I just leave it at zero then. Alright. There we go. Right, okay, we're sussing it out, we're sussing it out. Okay, so the way we use the camera modifier is you can use the LERP. We don't even need to camera location and get rid of that. Put that in there. Put that across here. Right. 
So the way we use the actual camera modifier then, sorry, this is the actual way apparently you have to use it. But even though it says alpha scaling happens afterwards in the bloody header files, it doesn't like it does do that. But anyway, in here in B, we can put in uh, minus 200 and the alpha should go in and do that. The tunnel is enabling and disabling a camera modifier that we have on our thing, okay? So I don't need to worry about setting the target or anything like that because it should disable and reverse it based on the alpha. So that should work in a lot simpler fashion. Still doesn't seem like the right thing, but I've got to change the speed of it. It's not be five seconds, but when you come out, yeah, let's change it not to be five seconds. Uh, mod, class defaults, 0.5, 0.5. And then pop that in there. Yay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. That works. It's a bit finicky, but I would like it to work a little bit better than that. But never mind, we'll do as we do. Um, the thing you want to do this side though, because it's the front end of it, this side will be smaller than this side. You want to make this one what larger? Come on, cat's gonna leave it. I'm gonna be the camera. Leave it later. So we go through there. All right, and obviously we need to change the rotation of the camera too. Now the rotation of the camera was a weird one, wasn't it? Because the rotation, I couldn't remember, it, again, it doesn't tell you anything in this bloody thing. Um, I think this is world's rotation. So I need to combine it with the local rotation of a 30 onto it, I think. So if I take the rotation here and do combine rotators and then I want to transform, inverse transform, the rotation. Uh, well, no, no, sorry, just normal transform. I always get those two mixed up. Transform, rotation, there we go. Local space to what, yeah, that one. Put into there, minus 30 there. Uh, transform. I need to get the actor to transform. Um, get player camera manager. Get actor transform and plug that into there. And then plug that into there. Now, this is going to snap, but at least we can test it straight away. Um, Hey, no. Uh, it's just Spotify. Just some like stream music on Spotify. Um, okay, why was it doing that? But works fine. Uh, with this. Yeah, rotation. This is getting its current rotation. Maybe I don't want to add it onto it. I don't know. Um, because we've done it with just the rotation change, but the problem that had was. It looked like it was just doing world rotation. So if I were to do like minus 30 there. Again, not worried about the lerp just yet. Just try that in there. I believe that was just... Look, it looked like it was just rotating it world-wise. So it's like that. Or like that, there you go. Uh, 
So why would that do that? Um, ah, uh, because the transform's changing all the time. Uh, that's why. That's why I can't rely on that. Um, and I can't get the transform straight away. Honestly, it's so dumb. But like, why not make this work the way you want it to work? Um. Break the rotator into three floats and then make a rotator. Uh, are you talking about this one? It, that's not going to do any different than what Combine is doing. Make rotator. Uh, break, sorry, break rotator. Um, look at rotation to player. Oh, we could rely on that. Um... That could do. We'll, we'll try that one. We'll try to look at rotation for player and see what that does. Um, get look. Uh, get sorry, player character. Yeah, com rotators are a pain to work with. Um, uh, get location. look at rotation uh that's the target the start is uh what gets is this bit here it goes there and then that'll go into there possibly i think that's the best shot we're going to get with the rotation makes sense Ah, 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 ah. ah, but the uh, the problem. Okay, so another problem we have is the character's movement is based upon the camera's forward vector. But the camera's constantly being updated to look at the direction of the player character. That's going to break. So that's a problem. Um, you need to be using the look at rotation on the spline. Like the uh, oh god. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, it would have been so much nicer if they made this actually good. <laughs> um, right. Rather than using that, I need to get the actor's location closer to the spline point, and for that, I need to get the actor for level uh, and there's no events in here I can use no so I have to do it all on here oh balls um I mean I could send it okay Spline. Spline. Uh, spline component. Drag that out. Get closest. Uh, not get closest. It's find, isn't it? Find closest. There you go. Find location closest of world location. Plug that in there. Plug that in there. Change it to world. Then the spline here. Uh, we go back to the tunnel. And we take this and to set spline. Um, it's so weirdly. Okay. Get actor from class. No. Get actor of class, sorry. Get actor of class. There we go. Level camera.
get the spline. Pass that through to the modifier. So when the modifier is enabled, oh, I need to um, compile that. There you go. Um, so when the modifier is enabled, it has a spline. It'll get the, the location of the spline and look towards the location of the spline. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think. Yes, there you go. Perfect. We nice. Okay. So now we can go into tunnels, come out of the tunnels. Hey. So that seems to work just fine. No troubles there. Forward and back working just fine. Yeah, here right. Nice. Okay. So recap what's going on there so here we are doing we have to pass through the spline variable to, you know you need to know about the world spline the level of spline now rather than doing it on here and doing get actor of class finding it because we know this ticks while we're modifying it and that's not efficient we don't want to do that so if we make it a variable that we can pass through the spline and on the tunnel when i enter the tunnel we just disable it um and then we'd set the spline up and then we just turn it off and on when we enter the leave the tunnel and that should be fine um the thing i want to check though that if this works is does this work if we have multiple tunnels um it should do but let's double check so let's add another bit to our level and we'll make it go up as well i'll do a little Little ramp. And go to landscape. So like that. Pretty simple. Okay, and then I'm gonna get my selection, go back to my spline. Bring it down. Snap it to the floor with an end key. Drag that round. Again. Bring it up. Snap down to the end. Move it down. And. Drag that. End. And I'm going to sort this corner as well. So this corner here. So it's all like a bit work curvy. Um, if I make this a linear type. Oh, and this one a linear type. We get a straight line which is more like what we want um and then this one also linear don't, don't really curve out like this it looks weird so we're gonna do line linear like that okay so go through here oh that linear is a bit snappy though isn't it Ooh, don't like that I'm just holding forwards, by the way. Right, okay. So, let's put another tunnel in here. And, uh, no. Pick, not that. There you go. Right. Is that can be no, not tall enough. That'll do. We just that do it. Okay, so let's see if this works as intended. Then I don't like that snap turn. I might have to tweak the tangents rather than make it linear. Okay, that seems to work just fine. Yeah, okay. So let's just tweak the tangents a little bit. Or we could do, actually, on the level camera, we could go to spring arm here. 
and add a lag for rotation like this and that might just do all the work for us let's just see how that works yeah might have to tweak it a bit more but um let's tweak it a bit more so camera lag rotation speed here uh we'll make that slower so down to like two maybe so it's a bit smoother better better So that volume could do with a little bit of tweaking in terms of its uh, size. We can go down. So if I go to that volume, we go tunnel and we'll just change the lerp here from minus 200 to minus 300, maybe. Maybe 250, we'll see. How that looks there. Yeah, that's nicer. Cool. All right. Yeah, nice. Okay. So uh, we're going to have to end it there because we've gone almost three hours and it's usually only an hour long. So, <laughs> um, but it's been super fun. Nice challenges to figure out. As I say, this is always nice to do live because it's like fun to show figuring things out and deciding on things live. It's kind of cool. Um, but what we managed to do today, we managed to get a spline moving camera um, and controls to match the spline direction we're going in uh, we've got our crates going on in here we've got um a indestructible one we've got a nitro one if i hit we can do that um we've got a spin attack which destroys blocks we've got a bouncy one we've got a basic enemy back and forth um uh, we've got physics on the box as well so if we took out a couple drops um the TNT have a t countdown timer. If I can get on top of it. A bit harder to do with keyboard and mouse. Whoops, I touched the uh, Nitro. Yeah. Too hard to do with keyboard. There we go. Um, there we go. And that detonates that. Cool. So, pretty easily you could probably keep taking this further and start making more mechanics from... Uh, Crash Bandicoot. Obviously, the game relies a lot on traps and enemies and different types of enemies, different types of traps. So, you could keep adding them and keep designing different things. And obviously, if you've got custom movement stuff, because some of the games brought in some custom movement stuff, like the uh, the masks in the latest one, for example. Um, but all of the seal that is later on. Um, but in terms of a starting project, this isn't too bad. Now, as I said, the project files will be available to gold patrons on my Patreon page. So, massive thank you to everyone supporting me and the channel over on there. Uh, the live stream of this has been recorded and will be available to everyone in a couple of weeks' time. But on Patreon page, you can watch it straight away after the show is finished. Um, so, massive thank you to all my Patreon members and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. None of this would be possible without you guys. So, thank you again so, so much. Uh, oh, how are you? What can you expect coming forwards? Well, we've got um, what's currently being edited at the moment. We've got more AI stuff with smart objects that's coming out. It started coming out on the uh, Patreon page and it'll be coming out on YouTube soon. We've got more survival series being edited now. Uh, we've got, oh my God, what else we've got? More control rig stuff. Uh, more of Luke's animation stuff is coming too. He's recorded a ton of those stuff. Um, it's just edit, going through crazy editing at the moment. Um, and we're back again on Wednesday live for question time. Next Saturday, uh, we are live for our Pokemon Retro Remake. We return back to our Pokemon game there and continue to work on that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to say massive thank you again once uh, to all my Patreon members. Thank you so, so much. Um, have a good night. It's very late here. I'm very tired. So take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Good night, everyone.